Welcome to the Apostles' Corner, QB Cast number 78, Weapons to Fight Our Enemy. Hey, this is the Frontier Harvest Ministries broadcast. And I'm your host, as always, Brother Chuck Lenhart. Hey, I got my uh, faithful side co-host, Jared Daniel. How you doing, bro? Oh, ready to... Ready to do some spiritual warfare with everybody today. Amen. This is a good, this is a very important time that we live in to know how to pray and know what to pray for and know who to pray for and what position we are in, who we are in Christ. Yes. For the unreached, when we go into these places, you need to have that fighting attitude against Satan. And you got to know, you you, got to know what your weapons are. Yeah. And today we got a prayer request. We want you to put your weapons together in the spiritual realm and be praying for our brothers and sisters out there next month. We're going to be doing another send out one of our last send outs to the 28 unengaged groups we've been contacting and aiming for. We got four more to go. 24 of them have been engaged and, and more than 10 of them we have been going back to and re-discipling people and doing the second part, phase two of engagement. But next month, be praying for our brothers as they go out to these last four tribes, as they yeah. go out, that we find these ones that, that can come out and the people of peace who are willing to hear the word of God and accept it, that when we speak the gospel to them, that, that the Holy Spirit will, will, will open their eyes and open their ears to hear the good news of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And if, uh, if you want to give to that, you can uh, go to our website there. Um, this authorized net, I believe they take like less than 2% if you give a debit card. Um, and here you can go. There's a ch- choice with PayPal or that. And uh, this last one, this uh, Zephy. I want to explain a little bit this real quick. Uh, Zephy is completely free um, to send money to our ministry. I'll show you how it happens. Say you want to give 25 bucks, it'll tell you what it's going towards. And then um, Zephy, it'll ask for their offering right here. See where it says donation? Now, their suggestion is like 20%. You don't have to do that. You can put others. You can give them a buck. You can give them $2, you can give them nothing, and then you give your donation. And what that does for Zephy is it helps them keep this 100% free. But you want to change that to others instead of 20% or what, what you not. You can just go put zero. You could put zero or there's no fee. give them a dollar. Yeah, give them a dollar. Don't give them nothing because it, it is free. But anyways, uh, you can go to the website. You can uh, give towards these needs to reach the unreached and support our teams out on the field. Amen. And today we want to talk about a real subject that, uh, you know, a lot of people think it's a lot of smoke and whistles, and sometimes it is. (laughs) Yeah. Spiritual warfare that we're really in a war. I mean, if you look around you, if you look at the TV or read your newspaper, you can see this elevated, heightened, demonic forces and activity that's happening on the earth. I mean, COVID is one of them. Mm-hmm. I really believe Satan tried to to come in early and uh, went through COVID. But and everything that went on with the church and all the governments and trying to shut everybody down, yeah. like it's just no coincidence. It's a satanic attack. And it's no coincidence that the warring tribe, the warring countries of the world today are where most of the unreached peoples are in the world. The, some of the countries with the worst uh, um, civil war crisis, their domestic violence, all this crazy stuff going on in these countries because Satan wants to keep these people entrapped. Yeah, he wants to gridlock them. And it's harder for missionaries and people to get into these places because of all this crazy stuff going into these countries and all the restrictions. Well, you know, as you say that, what's great is Frontier Harvest Ministries, which is the, uh, the ministry we serve and supports Apostles Corner, it goes, it has teams in many of these countries that are embedded. They're embedded teams that we contact through the internet and we arrange trainings and outreaches. And that's the key. That's what's gonna win these nations. If we can get in under the 
under the door, so to say. Yeah. Build the team, a local national team. Yeah. So if anything happens, they throw you out. Well, you have a connected team that knows what's going on, knows the vision, mm -hmm. and then you can continue to. Just like Jesus did it. You know, he was here three and a half years. He got under there, made a team, and boom, got zapped out of here. Yeah. You know, and sent his spirit back so to, we can do it now. To communicate with him. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, the late That's great. Awesome. The late great brother Lester Summerall, I want to read a quote from him here, and, and the war is real. And this, if you don't know much about Lester Summerall, I, I want to encourage you to get on YouTube because a lot of his information is out there. There's a YouTube channel called Brother Summerall Said. You can go check it out, all his teachings. Yeah, oh, yeah. There, and he there's was hundreds not, of them. He was not only a great American pastor and evangelist, but he is also a great missionary, a world traveler, a world changer, an apostle for Jesus Christ. And he, he went out there and did it and came back later on in his life and planted a church in India, South Bend, Indiana. But here he says, the spiritual warfare is just as real as any shooting war on the earth. Soldiers without their armor or who do not use their weapon can get ambushed, wounded and even killed, just as in a natural battle. And today, perhaps more than any other time in history, Satan's maneuvers are escalating. One look at our daily paper should convince you of this. We understand so little about the Lord's battle plans. Make no mistake, living the Christian life means engaging in warfare when you are doing it God's way. You know, that Amen. that's almost prophetic. Yeah, it you is. You know, he was uh, always on the edge of what, what was going on in the church and in the world and how the church should be responding. Yeah. And... Um, we just uh, love his teaching. Yeah, if you go and listen to it, he he encountered a lot of demonic activity. You know, he came out of a more traditional background and then left to the mission field as a young man with only five dollars on a boat. <laughs> you know, went to Australia, and he he encountered many different demons and many different things on on it on his faith journey across the world. He went through Tibet. In, in a time where there were bandits and people that could kill you. He went through China, Vietnam, and all these nations where it was impossible to go through back in the day. And he prayed, and he saw God's mighty hand on his life. You know, the highlight in his life in the Philippines, when him and his family pioneered the largest church is still there. Yeah. I forget what city, but uh, there was a... He went into that city, and uh, he ran into this demonized woman. Yep. And he smacked that demon right out of her. Yeah, the, the the woman, she was a prostitute from a young age, and these demons, they were living on in her and on her. And then when a, another man would touch her, the demon would bite her, and it would bite her all over her body wow. or whoever. And then the doctors in the hospital in the Philippines, this is recorded history. This is not just something that happened in the church. It happened in a hospital. Yeah, it, the government it, officials well, were there. Well, it actually, it actually gridlocked and captivated that entire city. Yeah. The governor and everybody was afraid of her. It was a huge problem. They found out that when the doctors touched her, they would physically see these bite marks come onto her. And she said there was a big demon that followed her and a little demon, and they were both together. And it, Lester did like a two-day fast and went in there and just... Smack, smack these demons out of her, and there was a huge <laughs> revival in the Philip in Manila. Well, well, what ended up happening is uh, everybody heard about him smacking this demon, and this woman got normal. And the governor, the mayor, and the yeah. mayor of that city came to Lester and said, "What? What do you want us to do for you?" Yeah, we'll do it. And he was like shocked, like, "What do you mean?" He goes, "Well, this woman has, you know, controlled our city for years, yeah. and you smacked." He said, "You know what?" Give me this I city, think it was hall. A, a, city hall city hall for like a month or something to preach a, the yeah, gospel do a whole crusade. for free. And they did it, and, and a revival started, and a church just mushroomed out of that whole thing. And, and it was because God used a man that knew how to do spiritual warfare. Yeah. And he, uh, he, he, in the name of Jesus, and he saw this supernatural bring deliverance to a human you know it, it, it there's that's the end result of it not just to be able to have power no have power to touch people's lives to set them free so they can know who christ is know who they are yeah amen yep hey we got that goes in, in yeah in, with it, the verse let's look here. at this second corinthians chapter 10 this is our core verse and there's many verses that back up there's a spiritual warfare look at ephesians the uh the uh, the weapons uh, that we have. For though we live in the world, we do not w wage war as the world does. 
the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We have demolished arguments. I'm sorry, we demolish arguments in every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So this warfare is not a physical war. Although Satan uses physical people to attack you, you know, they give into demonic influences and Satan will use Mm -hmm. those people to come against you. And, and so, but we got to know that the weapons of our war, you know, they're not, they're not carnal. They're not, you know, they're not of this earth, but they're spiritual. They're divine to demolish strongholds. And, and, And what a stronghold is, is a mindset, a mindset that that uh, works its way against God, and whole societies can get these mindsets. Tribal people that are stuck in these very remote, mountainous regions, they have all these different mindsets that are stuck in them, that are that are demonic, like like the E people of Southern Sichuan. If someone does a crime in the village. The witch doctor, right? He just picks two miscellaneous people. There's no, <laughs> you know, there's no investigations. Yeah. And then they get a hot pot of water. They boil water, throw an egg in there, and whoever can grab the egg without dropping it is the one that can go set be set free. The other one, however, is in big trouble. Mm-hmm. And so these demonic strongholds, these influences that come that destroy life, and so God gives us power and weapons to come against these things in the spirit and to break them off of people that they might be able to hear the gospel clearly. Yeah. It's really sad to see how carnal that we've become in this Western modern world today with all the material that we have. Many people are turning away from being more spiritual and not even wanting to believe like, well, I can't see it, so I don't believe in it. Yeah. But what's true in the physical is also true in the spiritual we what was created from the spiritual the bible says what was created in the physical came from the spiritual so the spiritual world is actually more real than this physical earth that we see now because the spiritual world was there before the physical world here's another thing strongholds are different everywhere you go you know in this country it's materialism Mm -hmm. or it's our great education and or or our money making and we say well what do i need god for you know i i I can do it i'm my own god it becomes more carnal that's our stronghold to to to, uh set us against god or else in myanmar or in, in other more remote countries the stronghold is probably more demon oppression like more blatant you can see more out there in yeah. your face. Yeah. We had one guy, he came in and said a witch doctor's put a spell on him and he's had brain problems all his life. And and the neighbor, he found out the neighbor's father did it so that their son could be smarter than him. Mm. And he was crippled with this curse all his life. Yeah. <laughs> Just people do that regularly. And it happens here too. You they have those oh, voodoo, yeah. those voodoo dolls, and yep, they you know yeah. poking holes in those dolls to put curses on oh, people. Yeah. yeah, all kinds of stuff. And and it goes back to knowing who we are in Christ. You know, knowing the mindset, having the mindset of Jesus Christ, having the apostolic mindset, so that when these curses try to come at you, you know who you are in Christ, and you know where you stand, so you can hold the shield of faith up and you to can, block that, and you can deal with them. Yeah. You, you know, know it's, so, it's something that you just don't ignore and say, ah, that's just coincidental. You know, there was a crazy neighbor, alcoholic neighbor in, our, in Mandalay where we were living. And he came out one day wanting to fight my one of my brothers over there because of our dog bumped his little girl. And he came out wanting to fight and throw fists. And he was just an angry human. You could tell he was just angry. But they don't have good work, you know, the background they come out of. And of course, we all get angry and we want to fight. But I ended up taking him to the hospital, and it was all cool. We settled it down. But then a couple of days later, he comes out and like wants to fight me again. The, the you know? demons just sort of manifested yeah. again. And I remember I I went down there. I kept <laughs> yelling at him, "Go to bed, go to bed." You know, I wasn't gonna go out and fight him. And then I went up on our roof, 
and I prayed down at him because I knew that he was going to go put curses on me. I knew he was yeah, going to do that because that's what they all do. They're all into that. And I just said, in the name of Jesus, you know, I just rebuke every single curse that comes at me. You know, those who want to curse me, the curses will go back to you. Yeah, they won't come right. back on me because I have the Holy Spirit in me. I have Amen. Jesus inside no, of me. No, no weapon formed and against rebuke, you shall prosper. I rebuke every single curse that comes on to me and my family and anyone trying to put any curses on me. Yeah. I just, I just refuse for that to come on to me. And I, I, that's, that's the first thing I did. I that's ran how you got to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. You got to take it and just grab it by the neck. It's a spiritual warfare. It's not a, you physical. can't go fight the person. But God use, or I'm sorry, Satan uses physical people mm -hmm. that have demons in them. Yeah. Yeah. Eventually <laughs> he messed with us. Eventually he like stumbled back into his house and went to bed. You know, those yeah. demons got tired. That's right. <laughs> but if I would have went out and fought him, I probably would have gotten kicked out of the country. Who knows? You know, yeah. anything could happen. Yeah. I could have gotten killed. These weapons are to protect ourselves spiritually mm -hmm. and to break spiritual strongholds as we looked at strongholds off of others or I want to say off of areas. Mm. I remember God uh, sent us into these areas, these remote areas, and we began to do some spiritual warfare, proclaiming his name, this and that. And yeah. uh, we saw many people get set free. Mm. But let's look at quickly warfare prayer. What, what, what does, you know, there's all kinds of different prayer. Prayers of thanksgiving, uh, prayers of protection, uh, praying for leaders, but we're talking about the warfare prayer that God wants us, I believe, to enter into these in a greater way in these days. It brings the reality of heaven to earth. It brings God's will, so to say, what God wants to do on earth. It brings it down here in the physical. Yeah, because we, this is this world is Satan's world. So things yeah. that are being done in this world is Satan's agenda. God yeah. wants his agenda to be done on this world, and he needs us to bring that reality into people's and, and lives. He, he, it seems like God tends to work through us mm -hmm. to yeah. bring these realities and for us to pray in it's true. as we go into our spiritual warfare. You know, God needs us. That's right. He needs it. We need him, of course, but he also needs us because he wants to use us and work through us. If he doesn't have a vessel to work through, he can't do his that, that, work on the earth. That's his desire. Yeah, his desire is to how he use functions. us. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm not saying he needs us like if he doesn't have us, he's not going to be able to function anymore. No. He's God, obviously, but he wants to just, he loves us that much that he just wants to be with us. We co-work with him. Yeah. And he with us. Amen. 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 Number two, seeing God, this is the effects of warfare prayer, seeing God move earth and the situations that bring people into bondage. Mm. This is a real big one, I think, because um, we go into a lot of different areas that are remote and, and people are, uh, it's, all, it's a whole new concept mm -hmm. of belief. Yeah. And so when you begin to proclamate and do spiritual warfare, it, it takes away the things that hinder people from being saved, yeah. the bondages. Yep. As, as you preach, as you pray, and as you go in and preach, you see this breakdown yeah. coming in. It's, their minds are spiritually being just like, their ground of their mind is being uh, plowed. That's right. So that when you share the word, the seeds get planted the right way. Yeah. There's an open heaven or a, there's more clarity to spiritual things. Yeah. And that all starts with prayer in the spiritual world by tearing down those demonic forces over the minds of the people. Yeah, and we'll look at some of these weapons real quick here. Um, number three, takes the veil of false religion off the minds of people. Yeah, and so. uh, I think that's a real big one because in in Corinthians, Second Corinthians here, it, you know, these weapons... They're divine to demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God and take captive the thoughts. Mm. So it's in the mind, it's in the thought where, well, you know, Satan attacks people's minds. He holds their minds, fills their minds with uh, philosophies that, are, that, that keep them bound into sin. Mm. And so this spiritual warfare prayer, as we do this, God lifts this off of a community. And as after that, as we preach the gospel, we see an, an 
more openness to his message. Uh, number is this number four opens the minds of the people to understand the truth. Yeah, so just I guess we just touched on that. Yeah. And the but, last one here. Prayer moves God to move man. Moves God to move man. And and to get this whole thing started, you know, you just got to go out and start praying. It doesn't. You don't have to go conjure up things and do these rituals or go read the Bible in certain areas of the town and do all these hit hit a stick on every corner of the street no, we're and not do all that. these weird things. No, we're just talking about going into an unreached community, putting your tennis shoes on with a couple friends, and praying through the darkest parts of those areas. Pray that God would take the veil of unbelief off of people's minds. Amen. Yeah, and that's when the Spirit of God begins to move because He's seeing that. His servants are going and, and, and initiating this now. And we're going in faith. Yeah, we're going in faith. So he says, okay, you want to go out? I'm going to start working through you now. Let's start changing uh, interesting this Interesting enough, you know, Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Mm-hmm. You know, some people think it's like at the church. You know, there's a church. and No, the gates of hell are out there. Yeah. And when we go through the gates of hell <laughs> in yeah. a neighborhood or a district, okay, we're doing spiritual warfare, and we come against different attitudes and people that can attack us and this and that. Yeah. But they will not prevail. Yeah. As we go to those gates and we command those communities and those villages or those peoples to be open. Yeah. As we persist in that, the Holy Spirit works with us, and He does the job of opening the minds of those that are opposed. Amen. Amen. Let's look Amen. at uh, weapon number one. Weapon number one, the weapon of proclamation prayer and the prophetic. I think this is a real key one in Psalms. It says, I will proclaim the decree of the Lord. He said to me, you are my son. Today I have become your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance, the ends of the earth your possession. And um, this is a decree or it's a proclamation. You go in there and you say, well, this is is what God says. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying it and I proclaim it over a community, you know, and um, God's word, amen, will perform what it's supposed to perform. Yeah, this is what God's word says. So we're doing it in faith. We're going to proclaim it over this valley. We're going to proclaim it over this city and over these people. And we're going to claim these people for Jesus Christ. That's right. You know, we're not going in there to try to build our own kingdom up. We're trying to build the kingdom of God on this earth. Amen. And we can't do that with our own strength. No. We have to depend on our prayers and going in there and, and the power of the Holy Spirit That's and right. faith. That's why you have to have faith to believe in the supernatural, that these things even exist or you won't have any power. The Holy Spirit won't work through you the way he wants to work through you because you don't have faith to even believe in that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So how can he work through you? You know, Jesus went to his own his own hometown and he didn't it says he didn't perform many miracles there because of the lack of the people of their faith in that town. Yeah. They didn't even believe who he was. They, this little uh, Joseph Jesus guy, you know, we know his family and he's a carpenter. So yeah. Jesus didn't do anything there because they didn't even believe in him. No. He only did pl- things in places where people had the faith level to believe and do and get things you, done. You know, one of the proclamations I think we need to make over our nation is that there's a real spiritual hunger for God. Yeah. To know God. Amen. You know, and, and, and it seems like in our culture we fill our tanks with materialism, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and that works for a while, but it runs out. And then we go to church to feel good. <laughs> yeah. And then and then we go back into the material world or and then go back to church to feel and, good and, again. And so we just have to break that off and say, in the name of Jesus, have hunger. Mm-hmm. A hunger for the things of God and God's word and prayer. Yeah, every day, every day. It's a relationship. It's a continual just knowing and building. Amen. Amen. Let's look at weapon two. Number two. Weapon of the blood. Yeah, why don't you read that? You got that verse there? Uh, Revelation 12, 10 to 12. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. 
and they did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Amen. Amen. I mean, that's a, that's a mouthful, but... By the blood of the Lamb and the know, word of your testimony. Proclaiming the blood yes. with your mouth. You know, again, it goes back to that proclamation prayer. Yeah. yeah. And it becomes almost like a prophetic thing that you set into motion as you proclaim the blood of Christ over an area. Yeah. That they will receive salvation. That they will receive the message. And you just do it in faith. Yep. And you believe that God is at work, amen, in the prayer of faith yeah. in an area. And, and you know what? That's that's another gift, the gift of faith. A spiritual gift. You know, we all have faith or we wouldn't be born again. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, you know, the gift of faith in someone, they, they believe what they pray. They believe that God is actually going to do it. And they just say these prayers of faith that unlock doors in people's minds and uh, the gift of faith that needs to be put into motion as we do our spiritual warfare. Weapon number three. Weapon of your testimony. And Uh, you sort of read that. By the the blood of the Lamb and the word of your your testimony. testimony. Amen. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And then, and, and you know, as is... you become a witness, you obviously, you've said this a lot, use your testimony. Yeah. It, it's it's the most personal thing you have to that, that, that you know. You didn't go to seminary no. to learn your testimony of how you become a Christian. Yeah, everybody <laughs> has a testimony. And, you know, another thing is... Um, knowing who you are in Christ, being a witness, your testimony... And the power, you know, the Holy Spirit, he, he's already came down on the earth, and he's already here. So we don't have to keep worshiping God, and we don't have to keep asking the Holy Spirit to come, you know? Yeah, a lot here. of people are saying, Lord, oh, come, Lord. Come, Lord, fill me up, Lord. And they're, and they're saying this, but the Holy Spirit's like, I'm already inside you. I'm already, I've already filled you up. Yeah. I, I'm already on the earth. What are you talking about? Like, I came in Acts chapter let, 1, let, verse 8. Let me out. Uh, yeah. Let me flow out of you. They're always asking, Holy Spirit, I want, I want, I want you, Lord. I want, I want you to fill me up, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. But it's like when you realize what you're saying, it's like, no, he's already come. He's in me. He it, that is in me be, is greater than he that's like, in the world. It should be like, I yield myself more to you. So yeah. that people can see the power that comes out of me that's already in me because exactly. I'm yielded to you and not myself. Exactly. Exactly. You got to change your proclamation. That's when the power starts coming out more, you know, and you start figuring out your identity in Christ. That's right. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the uh, last number four. The here. last weapon we sort of outlined here, the weapon of the word. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. In Luke chapter 4, when Jesus was tempted, we all know what he used to combat the devil. Mm -hmm. For it is written, and he would quote a verse. Yeah. And so there's power in the the proclamation of the word, Mm -hmm. is to proclamate the word either over a community, over a valley. I remember we went into a valley and we proclaimed the word of God. And slowly but surely, the people that lived in that valley came to Christ. Yeah, last episode we talked about where you guys went into one place with your uncle Pappy Ray. And the local brothers were like, why the hell would you want to go there? It's so so far and remote. and We've never even been there. You know, what are you doing, Brother Chuck? You're crazy. And then you went there, prayed in that valley. Pappy Ray had that vision of the red dragon that fell and became white. And today, there's people that have donated their land, that, that give their land and open their homes for house churches there in that area. That's there's right. hundreds of Christians in that area now. Yeah, and We're talking about a Himalayan foothill mountain town in the middle of nowhere that foreigners it, can't even it, go it, to. And it was gridlocked for many years, and many missionaries have tried to reach this place, yeah. and they couldn't. And then the one local brother's like, wow, Brother Chuck... You were right, man. <laughs> There's a lot of Christians there now. You know, we're going back and forth there every month, and we're, we got to train people there, and I didn't even see it coming. He, he said it was their hottest spot. Yeah, yeah. Hey, you got to hit where the iron's hot. Yeah, yep. And, where the, and, where and the harvest you know, is ready. You go in there with the attitude that your 
spiritual warfare prayer is going to set people free. Yeah. It's going to open the heavens. It's going to open their minds. And when the evangelists go in, there's this clarity. Yeah. And you people... can, and before you go yeah. in, you can almost feel like the hunger, the spiritual hunger in certain areas, or you can feel where the Holy Spirit is like, go, go yeah. here, yeah. do it here. Cause there's some places you go, nothing happens. You no, know, it's dead. there's many testimonies we have a go and nothing happens, but there's a lot of testimonies we go and things do happen. Yeah. So you got to hit, like you said, where the iron striking hot. Yeah. Where the people are hungry right now and want it. You and know, then, it was uh, early on in my ministry, I traveled down into this area uh, in southern Sichuan province among these people called the E. And uh, we did spiritual warfare and we, you know, we did what we could. Yeah. And uh, with little fruit. And then I just kept doing this, our family, for like five years. And we kept doing that and doing that and doing it. And, and, you know, with the little results, but some stuff coming up. And then I left that area. It was almost like a, we sowed the seed, plowed the ground, sowed the seed. Many other people did other things, too. It wasn't just us. Yeah. And then years later, we went back, and there was a complete different change in the spiritual atmosphere. Yeah. I mean, you could go to restaurants, and young people would ask you about God. Yeah. Or Jesus, if you mentioned it, they were just so inquisitive. We're before one like that. Amen. And now we have churches all through those regions. You know, and a lot of us are living in the prayers of the saints who have gone before us. That's right. In the 1800s, in the 1700s, before we even went to these countries, there were already people going and plowing and praying. Yeah. Maybe they didn't speak the languages of some of these countries, but they went and they prayed through these places. And they prayed and prayed and proclaimed the word of God over these places, That's right. believing that they are putting their sowing seed. That's right. And today we can live in the in the prayers in of those labor. saints. In Amen. their labor. Yeah, Amen. you know, I, I noticed the areas that we went to where previous missionaries had worked, those were the easiest areas to work yeah, in. Yeah, that's spiritual. People were the most open yeah. in those areas. Amen. So, and, and you know what? That's not coincidental. No. It's a spiritual atmosphere that had been broken through, and then God raises other people up to come in. It's almost like a sacrifice was made, an altar was made, and then God brings other people from another generation yeah. to come in and get the breakthrough and reap the harvest. Yeah. And and you can say, we didn't do the work. They did the hard work, and we came in and reaped the, 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 the harvest. But I'll tell you, reaping the harvest is hard work, too. It is getting all that stuff, getting the people in. What you're saying is total. People. It's totally biblical, you know, because Paul says one plows, one sows, but the Lord waters and makes and, it and grow. And the plowing and the sowing could be a couple generations apart, you yeah. know. Yeah, you <laughs> like know. you said. And then whenever it comes, you know, they've plowed, and then and then now we sow see, and harvest. See, all kinds of things happen, you know, mm -hmm. like those missionaries in China. They went in. I mean, I met a missionary. He told me he got in, just learned the language to be useful for the Lord, right? Yeah. And the communist threw them all out. Oh, man. And so years and years later, he came back to China, and I met him. He was an old man at that time. But yeah. there was, th th that laid dormant, and, and God was still at work. We know that without the missionaries. Yeah. And But the fact of the matter is, you go into these areas where these people labored, and you find this more openness. You might even find stories of the old missionaries that people still remember. Okay. I know I did. Yeah. And then and that helped progress the gospel. Amen. Let's look. Amen. Did we look at this fourth one? Oh yeah, the name of the Lord, the name of Jesus. Number two. We're in number two from number four. Every knee bow and tongue confess. So here in this verse in Philippians two nine to eleven. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. You know, I used to go in, into these very remote areas, and there was this thought in my mind, I could very well be the very first person that comes into this region that proclaims the name of Jesus. Yep. 
and what an honor. And, and we can't forget to do it. Yeah. We get into them areas. We, we proclaim in the name of Jesus. This area opens and these people can see the glorious love and grace oh, of the Lord. Hallelujah. And, it's know, very... Yeah. And, and so there's many areas uh, that, that God wants to send us still. Amen. It's easy to get into a country as a missionary and just get distracted yeah. about doing this kind of stuff. When it's the first thing that we should all be doing, you know, we can get distracted by learning language, get distracted by wanting to make disciples, get distracted by, oh, I need to plan a church, you know, and trying to connect with people and always busy, busy, busy. When really, you know, we need to take time first to do prayer and pray and be in the word and proclaiming over your friends, over the people that you meet. And, and how does God want to move? You know, that so, so often we forget to even do these things. Yeah, because we forget we're in a war. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and then you have a blowout and something happens and then you, you remember, yeah, oh, man, or, I'm in a war. Yeah, or your strategy doesn't work. I mean, when, that doesn't go When we right went way. to Mandalay, the first thing we did was what? We got out on the streets and prayed, man. Yep. Yep. Remember we went around that moat? Oh, yeah. And that early morning we We rented out. motorcycles and did prayer wheelies <laughs> <laughs> across the whole town yeah. praying and handing literature out and then and then you see with your physical eye the effects of spiritual warfare yes. that people become more open to the message of Jesus Christ and and really you know it's an act of faith you got to mix your faith into this and, and and believe what you're doing is what God's doing. Amen? Amen. That he is uh, wanting to set people free wherever you're at, and your warfare prayer counts. Yes. Amen. Your prayers are much needed. God's looking for mighty men and women who will say, Here I am. Here I am, Lord. I will go and proclaim your word. And you watch God do the rest in your life. Have a good weekend, everybody. Yeah, God bless y'all. Use those weapons God's given you. Amen.